your brush with shaving cream for tough whiskers or a tender skin. <laughs> Tonight's story by Paul Monash, entitled The Four Fatal Jugglers and starring Alan Hewitt, has its own peculiar prescription for mystery. The ingredients? Well, take four people, mix them together lightly in an isolated place, add a dash or two of mutual hatred, let them juggle that hatred back and forth until it erupts into murder. And you have the four fatal jugglers. Well, Mr. Barnes, setting the stage for murder. Four fatal jugglers. That makes me shiver to think of it. Just as I shiver a bit to think of a fellow all set to shave tough whiskers or a tender skin without mole. Yes, when you start juggling that razor in the morning, you want mole. Because it's smooth. So smooth. It's slick. So slick. It's the smooth, smooth, slick, slick shave you get with M-O-L-L-E. Mole. The heavier brushless shaving cream for tough whiskers or a tender skin. Try it. Mole. And now for tonight's Mole Mystery, The Four Fatal Jugglers, starring Alan Hewitt. Yeah? Hello? Bob, 
this is Gordon. Who? Gordon Penrose, your brother-in-law. Oh, uh, what do you want? I want to have a talk with you, Bob. Good long talk. Well, if it's got anything to do with my sister wanting a divorce, you can save your breath. I'm back about 100%. And what you haven't heard my side of the story, Bob, if you'd only listen. Listen? Yeah, I'll listen. I'll listen to you lie about what you did with the money in Lydia's trust fund. What do you mean? I've been checking into your handling of that account. Or I should say your mishandling. Well, you're nothing better than a common thief. And I'm going to see that they put you away like that. Bob, please, there's a lot to explain, more than I can say over the phone. But, Bob, I've got a suggestion to make. Go ahead. I want you to come up to my place on the island this weekend. This weekend? My partner, Dave Copeland. Oh, him. Yeah, he's going to be there, but he won't be in the way for long. Why don't we just get together in town? Oh, this way we can do some other things. A little hunting, for instance. Hunting? For what? Well, for ducks, ostensibly. Ostensibly? (laughs) Did I say ostensibly? I meant obviously. Obviously. Beloved husband, you remember Lydia, the man you sometimes see coming and going in your apartment, or at least one of the men. Ha <laughs> ha, very funny, Gordon. Just what are you doing home now? Just want to give you the good news that I'll be away this weekend. Oh, I'm on the verge of tears. Yeah, I thought you would be. I'm not deserting you, however. I'm just going up to the island for the weekend with a couple of people you know. Who? Interested? Well, one of them is your dear brother, Bob, and the other, no one other than... Say, what rhymes with other... Lover, yes, lover. What's all this nonsense? Oh, nothing, nothing. I was just going to mention that I'm also taking up Dave Copeland. Dave? He's never been up there, has he? Well, you and your filthy mind. Our trained legal mind, my dear. Oh, we're going to have a cozy time, all three of us, sitting around the fire, going out hunting. Hunting? Certainly. Ducks, things like that. Oh, no. No, I know. Oh, Lydia, you don't think... Oh, Lydia, no, how could you? Why, you... I, I know it's... You don't have to I. I'm your own husband. Why, you... you oh, Lydia, how could you? How could you? <laughs> Look, like this comes only once in a lifetime. A 
And so, mystery fans, that was Act One of the Four Fatal Jugglers. Oh, I can think of pleasanter situations than being on that island with three potential killers. Now, say, and so can I, Mr. Barnes. A pleasant shave with mole. Now, that's the situation that I want listeners to arrange for themselves. Because mole is the heavier brushless shaving cream for tough whiskers or a tender skin. Because mole is heavier, it not only softens your whiskers, it stands them up straight while your razor cuts them off close and clean. With mole, you shave faster, closer, easier, and you shave painlessly. Try it. See if you don't say it's smooth. So smooth. It's slick. So slick. It's a smooth, smooth, slick, slick shave you get with M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tough whiskers or a tender skin. And now this is Jeffrey Barnes returning you to Act Two of The Four Fatal Jugglers. Some time. 
She's giving up a lot because she thinks she loves you. What about you? I don't have to discuss this with you. All right. I think you made yourself clear. I'm going to turn in soon. I'd like to be kind of fresh and steady when we go hunting tomorrow. Good night, Dave. Bob, wait a second. Skip it. Bob. Oh, the devil with him. Dave. Huh? Dave. Who's that? Lydia. Good Lord. I had to come, Dave. I had to stop you. Stop me. I'm getting killed. I rented a car and drove up here. There was a rowboat at the landing. Well, you just take that rowboat and get off this island. Dave, no, I can't. I won't go unless you come with me. And if you love me. I don't love you. Dave. I thought I made that pretty clear. I've been a fool, haven't I? You were just a little bored with your marriage. So are you. And so we got together. But, good Lord, why does it have to be blown up into some great Shakespearean tragedy? Why can't we just let the whole thing be finished? Over. Because I'm in love with you, Dave. Well, I was. Well, that's fine. You were, now you're not. Why don't we just be friends? Surely we've got the basis of a friendship. Friendship? <laughs> oh, you think I would ever like you? No. No, you just don't understand, do you? Please, forget it, can't you? No, I can't. You don't know me, you never have, because you're always so concerned with yourself. No, Dave, no. I'm going to make you as unhappy as you're making me at this moment. Great Scott, keep it down. I'm going to make you pay for this. You sound like something out of a cheap novel. Cheap? I'm going to make you look cheap. I'm going to make you so miserable you'll wish that... Gordon. Don't stop on my account. Go on. I like to hear lovers quarrel. Go on, tell him the rest. Tell him you'll make him wish he'd never been born. Go on, listen. Shut up, you. My friend. Go on, dear wife. Finish your farewell address. You mustn't let me interrupt you. I never have till now. Oh, Lord, how I hate men. All of you. Oh, now, let's not go to extremes. There are good and bad in every sex, I always say. You've certainly got a peculiar sense of humor. Hey, what the devil is... Lydia, what in the name of... Your sister decided to pay us a little visit. Very thoughtful of her. Lydia, I don't know why you've come here. But go back to the city now, do you hear? Oh, yes, I hear. But I'm not going. And quite right you are, my dear. We'll put you up in the bunk room, and Bob and Dave and I can sleep in the main room. Your being here with us could enliven what might possibly, but not probably, have been a dull weekend. Oh, yes, Lydia. Now that I think of it, I'm very glad you came. <laughs> Stop trying to combat this dandruff with ineffective methods that actually are no better than plain water. 
Use double dandarine and destroy the cause. Get double dandarine tomorrow. Your money back if not satisfied. Get out. Huh? Do 
Go on, get out. Look, Bob. You've got to take my word. Keep quiet. I'm not interested. You know, you had me scared out there. Scared? I thought I'd never live to see you burn for killing Lydia and Gordon. But I bluffed you, Dave. Bluffed me? When I rocked the canoe. You see, I don't know how to swim either. again, bringing down the final curtain on tonight's mystery theater presentation of Paul Monash's The Four Fatal Jugglers. Be with us next week to hear a story entitled Check Number B-131. The original music for the mystery theater was composed and conducted by Alexander Sembler. Alan Hewitt was starred and John Sylvester, Charlotte Manson, and Grant Richards featured. Any resemblance between the names and characters used on Mystery Theater and any actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. National Broadcasting Company.